Man, we got another great video. I'm excited to do this one. I'm not wasn't as excited yeah. for Tyler here this morning. First off, I wanted to take Tyler and kind of slap him around and he <laughs> thought he did some of that entry level mechanic mistakes. And, yeah. and I was like, no, because when we take these motors all the way apart, we talk about how important it is to store the parts properly. If you take something heavy like this and just throw it in a box, you're gonna cause damage. So we had to look at something here a little deeper we're gonna show you. But the good news is it wasn't Tyler's fault. So let's see what the problem was. So zoom in here. So this is called the middle gear. Back up a hair, we'll just say it goes in here, right? And this bearing rides here and so on. And what we've got going on is we have this gear and then we have this gear and we have to adjust these and we want them to sit at the right depth it actually goes to be exact it goes this way and so to do that we put shims in between here and you can see i got some shims falling out my hand right here and that sets that depth now here's the thing this takes a lot of specialty tools it takes a lot of understanding to set them correctly so that they're going to have the best contact patch on the teeth, right? You are going as entry-level tech sometimes and just doing sealant or simple gaskets or this or that. If this was running for 36 years perfectly, you don't want to end up damaging or messing this up because quite often you're going to be able to put those same shims that Yamaha had in there, put them back in there, not have any problems, not have to adjust this. It's still a fantastic idea to go in here and you, there's a whole procedure in the manual to put some dye on here and make sure that you have the right contact. But my point is, in the real world, we know that we have a lot of luck by just putting back exactly what was in there checking it with the die, making sure we have the contact, at least the shims are gonna be correct. You don't need any specialty tools or anything else. But here's the problem we ran into. So Tyler today, we go to take his apart, and here are the way the two shims were, and we saw this really goofy, get my finger out of the way, we see this really goofy 90 degree bend, and the shim is like this. I'm gonna pull it off here, take both of these off, now that we know where they go. Like I said, they get stacked right here. And this was bent at such a, a nice 90 degree. The first thought was, oh, is that special? Or is that supposed to be located? We have a lot of locating pins and tabs and transmissions. Can you see that? You can see that locating tab. Here's a ring that locates the bearing. Okay, so when I first saw this, I thought, well, that's weird. I've never seen that before. And then I, my gut started going, oh no. Did this when it was being stored have something like heavy put on it and it bent it over? So what we do next is of course we went to the factory service manual then we went to the parts fish You guys seen us do this a million times the parts fish there Tyler once you take over Okay, this is number nine the shim that we need uh, And if you look it up actually number nine It is it's discontinued or unavailable well, here's the big thing that we were looking at. So not only was the shim we needed, once we measured it, we took a caliper and measured the thickness of this. Notice how there's all these different thicknesses, and that's how we said we set those gears. The one that's damaged, the one we have here, discontinued. Okay, but the big thing was we had to decide, was it damaged or was it a problem? The service manual gave no indication that said, take the 90 degree tab and lock in its locating tab. There was nothing. So you start to get into that. Every mechanic should know this. You start to go, gosh, boy, something just doesn't seem right about that. And then when you put these on here and you kind of look at that, you see how with the bend, they even seem to be the same diameter now. You guys see that? So if I, if I bend this back over, Okay, I'll make it flat. Do you see how it's overlapping? And, and this isn't a spring. This is a shim. There's a big difference, okay? So this isn't right. You know, that is, something's just really goofy about that. So what we did is I started thinking, gosh darn it, you know, what did you do? But I saw a clue. And here's the clue that we saw. You got a little piece of silicone on there. That was a huge clue. You could see some of the old silicone still on the case there. Let's really get in there. That little ear right there, that was an enormous piece of evidence to get Tyler off the hook. Let's go ahead and look at where this rode. So this sat in here like this, and what happened was this guy, I'm gonna put it back how it was, was sitting like this, and look at the witness mark. How wild is that? There's the old silicone, this is how it was put in. 
Guys, look at the case right there. You can see that definitive line right there. So let's, let's kind of summarize this. We've got a video on witness marks and how important it is. We keep using, what's that phrase this year? About the parts being married. Being married. You got to look at what does this ride against? What does it ride on this side? We think of all those relationships. You've got to think about what's going on here because the big question is, we got to decide, well, you know, I, I want to know, especially in a teaching environment, we think of, well, whose fault was this? What do we need to think about here? Is there a lesson that needs learned? This tan silicone like this, you are not going to find commercially over, you know, available over the shop. I absolutely believe that this was damaged either at the factory or it would be really interesting to go back into an 82 and see if any recalls were done to see if there was any you know transmission issues or a case had to be split for anything but this is 100 percent human error so whoever put this in just missed their attention to detail and as they were sliding this case on or doing that they caught the edge of that that case is a heck of a lot heavier than that little shim. It bent it over, they sealed it up, it went 36 years, you know, making that assumption that it happened on day one and uh, just wasn't noticed. You know, you know what I'm saying? My question though is, is this, if that shim was pulled in there, okay, the measurement between those two gears that we talked about, we don't know how accurate that is. When we take this and, and put it correct, with the new shim, and by the way, I want to give a little shout out to Sioux City Yamaha. A couple of our students are working at Sioux City Yamaha and Bob's Bike Shop, same owner. Uh, I cannot believe their old inventory. So Luke, you guys down there, killer. Buck, you should be watching more of these videos that we keep uh, shouting out your name. They had a discontinued, not available shim where we're going to be able to put that right back in, make it back like new, but we have to go and measure this, don't we? But man, isn't that a ton of work when you just do something wrong? Yep. Yeah, so Tyler, my friend, you are off the hook. Yep. <laughs> this had nothing to do with his skill or ability. But man, I'll tell you what, though, we're on going back together. And especially you new guys. I mean, you guys can vouch for this. How many times a day do you see something and you don't know that it's wrong? Because you're new, right? Yep. So you guys that are out there working, turning wrenches, you're not an expert. You haven't looked at something. The first thing I, when I saw this, I immediately was like, oh, like that's wrong, right? But then what did I do? I backed up, got humble, and said, you know what? Maybe it's something I don't know. I did not have every model in the world memorized. And I was realistic enough to just go, hey, let's just you know, step back a second. Let's get into our manual, get into our parts fish, and, and diagnose this and find out if there is something special about it. Right? All right, we're going to get back at it. So thanks again. Share this with your friends. And uh, if you're interested in the motorcycle program, check us out. Thank <laughs> you.